I want to speak, uh, this, the shir this week is dedicated in me uh, memory, in before Shlema, of a woman in California. Um, she doesn't have a Hebrew name, but her English name is uh, Susan, uh, Susan Felix. She should have Rafua Shlema, Betoch Shar Chol Yisrael. Even though the doctors have said that there is no way that she could live, right? We've already heard from Rav Moshe Sternbach Paskins about uh, Dr. Benjamin Sarovsky that um, there's not a nace to daven for such a person because medical advancement is constantly changing and the person, even if the doctors say they're not going to live, but there's always a possibility for change. Okay, um, I want to share with you now in the next year uh, a concept that I thought of and I actually have been in touch with Rabbi Edelstein, I'm hopefully meeting with him this week about it and I believe it's a major, major concept that I, I would like to share with, with the Koilul and with, with everybody who listens to the Yishirim, right? I think it could have a major, major impact on Kala Yisrael. We know the Gemara says, if you look at this Gemara, it's on the back of these sheets I gave out, Yuma Daf Tesamad Aleph. The Gemara says, Mikdash Rishon Mar Mipnei Ma'achorev Shloshet Dvorim Avod Azor Gil Raya Shvichas Damen There were three primary events. Mikdash Shaini Shaya Sukkum Betorah Mitzvah Gemil Zchasadim why was the second base of Mikdash destroyed? Right? And the Gemara answers, Sinas Chinam. Lamdecha Shashkul is Sinas Chinam, Kenegit Shlosh Averis. Kilirai Shri Chazam and Avodazar. Right? That Sinas Chinam parallels the three. Right? Rav Yochanam Rav Lezer, Damri Chavayu, Rishonim Shnis Gala Avonim Nis Gala Kitsam, the base of Mikdash Rishon, those three Averis, Kilirai Shri Chazam and Avodazar, the Aver was revealed. So the end was revealed. Achronim, um, that's us. Shlonis galavonim, lonis galaketsam. The end wasn't. Um, the end wasn't revealed. Now, so we, we see from this gemara that sinat chinam is the avera, which is stopping the gula from coming. So my question is like this: If that's true, then um, our whole focus really should be on ending sinat chinam. Now it's true. There's a lot of talk about sinat chinam and a lot of shmuzim and a lot of shirim. But what about practically ending Sinas Chinam? What do you have to do? What do you have to do to end Sinas Chinam? Just don't hate your neighbor. You know, that's a little bit too vague. It's not going to work. So I came up with the following idea. It's not really my Chiddush. I just really understood it from reading Rev Edelstein's sheets for the past few years. And I realized this is exactly what he's saying. And I went to his Gabbai, I called him up, and he says, yes, this is what the Rav is exactly saying. I began to gel by me when, um, after Meiron, after he spoke Meiron, he said this idea, but really this week it, it gelled much, much more, right? What Rabbi Edelstein is saying is that we know that there's a concept, Koma David Rachman Tov of it, when a person has something bad happen, you're supposed to say Koma David Rachman Tov of it, right? right? That means that what happened looks bad, like we, just, we spoke before about the court case um, getting, and the weddings, right? It's not really bad, it's really good. Number one. Number two, that means that if it's not really bad, then the, if someone's doing bad to me, that means he's not really doing bad to me, right? He's doing good to me. Now, he might have bad intentions. Yosef HaTzadik said to his brothers, yeah, you had bad intentions, but Hashem had good intentions. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter how bad the intentions of a person are, but really, um, they're, really they're good, number one. And number two, said Rebbe Edelstein, is that it's coming from Hashem, right? This person is a shliach from Hashem to do what is being done to you, right? So let's say the case we spoke about just before, a court case. Someone makes a court case against me, right? I, I won already, there's really no reason to rehash it, yeah? Hashem wants this person to go to the weddings of his grandchildren in Chutzarts, so he makes a court case against him. And that, but the person maybe had bad intentions, but that doesn't affect me, Kuzan. And said of Edelstein, therefore you're not allowed to have any negative feelings against these people. If someone does something bad against me, that's a gzera from Shemayim, and therefore, as far as emotionally, I am not allowed to have any bad feelings against them. I spoke to Rabbi Yaakov Hill last week about it. He said, that's halacha. Halacha is that um, you're not, you're, and that's seen as chinam. Why is it seen as chinam? Because you're not allowed to have those feelings. They're, they're incorrect feelings, right? Really, Hashem is doing this for your benefit. Every single thing, as Rev, as Rev um, uh, Shimon Galoi told me on the beach in Netanya. Everything Hashem does to you is infinite chesed. Therefore, you're not allowed to have negative feelings against people. 
maybe they have negative feelings against you, but that's you know their problem, right? Hashem is sending something to me, I'm not allowed to have negative feelings. That's in his chinam. So it comes out like this. So anytime I have a negative feeling against Ben somebody, that's a wrong feeling, it's incorrect, and it's asr, it's in his chinam. So how do we end that, right? So what I, what I understood from Edelstein, and his Gabi confirmed that, hopefully meeting with him about it as well, is that we have to change the status quo of all of Klai's right? Everybody thinks that when someone hurts me, someone, someone sues me, uh, what else? Someone insults me, someone, you know, a spouse um, throws, you know, uh, some, a frying pan at my head or something like that. You know. some, people think that that's something to get, you're allowed to get upset. You're not supposed to get upset. One of the Gedalim was married to somebody who had psychological problems. And when, that, when, when his wife would come and start screaming at him, he would close the safer, listen to her, you know, very attentively. When she was satisfied that she had um, sufficiently, um, you know, trashed him, she would walk away and then he would just go on his learning. And that is the correct Torah outlook towards these type of things. Right? Like I told you once, I met Sternbach, and he was, so, he was smiling. I said, why is the Rav so happy? He said, there was just a major demonstration outside my house. They threw dirty diapers, uh, all, rotten tomatoes. They took all my sarum, they shred them in the paper shredder. Right? I got all their mitzvahs, and, and they got all my avihers. Why shouldn't I be happy? That's the correct Torah outlook. The problem is, is that there's a status quo that people think, if people get upset with you, if people do something wrong, you get upset. So we need to change um, the status quo. How to do that? I'm not exactly sure. You know, I'm working on that, and I'm, I'm working on an idea for a project for the nine days where all Kalei Israel does something together that we could change the status quo. Um, that is definitely in great need. But I want to start off by sharing with you these words from the Grah, yeah? And it's one of the most famous Grahs. It's here on the other side of the paper here. I'm not going to go through it inside. You can do that in your own time. It's, um, it's on a new version of Evan Shlomo, page Lama Gimel, Lukuti Agra. It's taken from the Biar Gadas um, in Bukharos of Sav- Savad Be'atunia. No, actually, that's in Baba Basra, right? In Baba Basra. That um, the Gra says like this. Basically, we know there are four animals that have one sign of Kashras, right? There is the Gamal, the Arnevet, the Shafan, and the Chazer. Three of them, the sign is on um, the sign of Kashras on the inside. They chew their cud. Um, they don't have split hooves. One, the Chazer, has the split hooves, but he doesn't have the um, inner sign of Kashras. He doesn't chew his cud. Says the Grod, this is a remiss, to the fact that a Pagam in Amuna on the inside is much worse than a Pagam in, um, in, on, in, in actions. And this is, this is a shot in the Gemara in Yuma, he says, right? The Rishonim, they were doing the worst three of years, you could think. But, you know, in, inside they're right. They just had a very big gate Sahara. You know? Okay, you, you know, when you're around someone with such a big gate Sahara, you want to be careful. They shouldn't kill you or do other things to you. But, you know, they were all right inside. Right? We'll read this line inside. He says here, um, where the wine start, well, lines start getting wide. Right? He says here, uh, Right. Uh, three lines from the, uh, where they get wide. Right. All three things are But their heart was fine. Not only they were not doing these three table verses, but they were learning Torah and Chasadim. So why were they destroyed? Because their heart was messed up. They didn't have bitachon Hashem. They had kina and sina, right? How can they have bitachon Hashem? Like Pasuk says it, but Nevi says it. Right. Okay. Now says the Gros something else here. If you look in the, on top on the Evan Shlomo, he says something very scary, right? He says like this. He says, "Avol bishasik atol gminas chadim shikol ze eno ella lasos lo shame." That means if a person has seen his chinam, he's getting upset with other people. If somebody, you know, calls you a name or takes you to court or causes you financial loss or someone screams at you and you get upset, that means you have seen his chinam because you don't really understand it's coming from Hashem, not from the person, right? So then why are you learning Torah, right? He says, Eino, and Gemilis Chasadim, Eino Ela Lasos Lo Shame. You're doing it because you want to feel good about yourself, yeah? If a person... Um, has the correct bitachon, 
and he understands that everything's from Hashem, and everything's doing from Hashem, then his turn is Gmil Sadim is, is in place. But if not, says the Gron, you're doing it because you're self-centered and you want comfort. Yeah? It's quite scary because it really talks to all of us and we really have to work on it. But the point is, which I really believe in it, I'm really trying to get this meeting with Rev um, Edelstein and to try to think of an idea which will work. And again, anybody who has an idea, please let me know as soon as possible because we want to try to implement it. But the point here is, is that Claudius has to change. And that is exactly right after Meron. And I went to America just to say this point, and I didn't cop it on such a deep level, but the point is, Kalal Yisrael has to change. We have to understand, if so, nothing, no one ever does anything bad to you. It's not coming from the person, it's coming from Hashem. The person is a shliach, okay, that's Hashem's business, he chose this shliach, whatever. But never to feel bad feelings about anybody. Now, it's, it is a high madrega, but it's much easier if everybody in Kalal Yisrael would have this clear, and they would understand it's not the right thing to do, you're much easier. We'll speak about this more on Man Kingdom.